morning, everybody. How are you doing? Welcome to Community Life. We're so glad that you're here with us, joining us this morning. Sing with me as we worship the Lord this morning. Let's raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah, heaven comes to fight for me, I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm.
more time? And can we have all the kids out there? I know that you know the motions to this chorus. So kids, if you're not standing up right now, stand up and let's do this chorus one more time. And I'm gonna try to do the motions. I'm not as good as Miss Hannah, but I'm gonna try, okay? I'm gonna sing. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. We just want to say hi. Thank you for joining us on here this morning. Um, take a second right now, and would you just make a comment in the Facebook um, chat feed? Just a, a shout out to let us know that you're here. Um, we really are missing seeing you um, in person. I just want to jump through the screen into your living rooms and give you all a hug. You're probably glad that we can't do that right now. But say hi to everyone on the chat feed. Um, right now. What we're going to do um, in just a minute is go back into worship. I hope that you all had a wonderful Easter um, last week. You know, it was different for sure, but as we talked about last week, Easter was not canceled. We were still celebrating a risen king. And guess what? Even though Easter is over, it was last week, we are still celebrating our risen king today. And so I'm really excited. We're going to start with something a little bit different today, um, something creative. We're going to go back into worship in a creative way um, with a video from one of our worship leaders um, in just a second, Fritz Schindler. We want to encourage you to worship along with this video. Take in the beauty of nature. Listen to the words um, as we really just celebrate the King of Kings. So pray with me, and then we will go into this video. Lord, we have come. Um, to our living rooms this morning to worship you. Fill every heart, fill every living room right now with your Holy Spirit. Lord, as we um, watch this video, as we sing these songs, Lord, would you be glorified? Would you be lifted up? Lord, we, we love you. We cling to you in times of desperation, times of darkness. And, and we do raise up our voices as we just sang in this song. We raise up um, our praise and our hallelujahs to you. Lord, you are the King of Kings. I pray you'd be glorified today. In Jesus' name, amen. In the darkness we were awake without hope without a light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt praise the father praise the son Praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. To reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost. To redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross. For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side. Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus, for our sake you died. Praise the Father. And the 
hall of heaven held its breath Till that stone was moved for good For the Lamb to conquer death And the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in awe For the souls of all who come To the Father are restored And the church of Christ was born Then the Spirit lit the flame Now this gospel truth of old Shall not kneel, shall not fade By His blood and in His name It is freedom, I am free For the love of Jesus Christ Who has resurrected me Yeah forever to the King of Kings. That is the cry of our heart this morning, Lord, to praise you because you are our King. Sing with us together this, I would be hopeless. I would be hopeless without your goodness. I would be desperate without your love. Slave to the darkness. If it wasn't for the cross, you have won me with your kindness. Chase me down when I was lost. Where would I be if it was? was a prisoner now I'm not with your blood you but my freedom hallelujah for the cross oh, oh we praise you Lord oh my shame song and hold the glory oh the power of the cross hallelujah thank you Jesus I was a prisoner now I'm not with your blood you but my Son! 
I was a prisoner, now I'm not with your blood you but my freedom hallelujah for the cross that in this moment as we are declaring your truth, Lord, that you would just speak to every heart that is listening this morning. Lord Jesus, that you will give hope to the hopeless, Lord Jesus. You will give peace to the restless, Lord Jesus. Joy, those, those that right now their joy is lacking, Father. We just pray, Father, right now for that. That's the desire of our hearts, Lord. Sing with me. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness, Lord, through the shadows of my soul, the work is finished, the end is written, Jesus Christ, my living hope. could imagine such great a mercy what heart could fathom so boundless grace God of ages step down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame the cross has spoken I am forgiven, the King of kings calls me his own, beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever, Jesus Christ, my Lady. lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name Jesus Christ my living hope let's sing it again hallelujah hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain. There's 
salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise, your very body began to breathe out of the silence. The roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your very body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion the grave has no claim on me. Jesus, yours is the victory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. It has lost its grip on me. from that first verse and I want you just to close your eyes wherever you're at and just listen to these words that say how great the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain I could not climb a mountain that we could do nothing about it's too high for us and listen to this in desperation I turned to heaven have you ever been in a desperate place that you just are calling and reaching out and spoke your name into the night. And that's when he comes through. Sometimes we are at the end of our rope, and that is when he comes through. For some of us, we need to just let the tears fall right now. We need to just acknowledge that we've come to a mountain that we can't climb, whatever it is in our life right now. And as we call out to his name, he comes and rescues us. He is our living hope. He's our living hope. And I just want to speak those words over you right now. Some of us need to hear that. Rod and I were praying last night for this service, and he was going through some of these songs, and we just had such a beautiful time of prayer for you. Because some of you, like we did last night, needed words of hope spoken over you. And so would you just pray with me right now? Would you just close your eyes wherever you're at, from the youngest kid up to the oldest adult? Would you just close your eyes? And would you just receive this in Jesus' name? Lord, I speak hope to my brothers and sisters, not because of anything that we have to offer, but because of who you are. You are the living hope, Lord. You rose again and conquered death. You conquered anything that could come against us. And so, Lord, right now, those of us that are in a dark season or been in the dark season in desperation, we've called out to you in the night. Lord, we turn to you and we, we, we lift our face to you. And we just receive your peace. We receive your hope in this season. We thank you that we don't have to have it all figured out because you are the almighty and we're your kids, and we can just hide in your shadow. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, worship team. Amen. Can you guys say amen wherever you're at, wherever you're at? And um, I, I want us to just be people that will speak hope to one another. And sometimes we got to look in the mirror and speak hope to ourselves. Okay? Amen. Well, kids, if you don't have your Bibles, um, I want you to go get those right now because in just a couple minutes, we're going to have our kids spot. And you're going to need those. So go get those. But I want to share um, a couple just exciting things, a couple quick announcements um, before we do um, a few other really special things this morning. So one thing that we are really excited about is um, starting up some virtual um, Zoom groups. One thing, our church is called Community Life Church, and we are bound and determined in this season to keep the community in community life. And so one of those ways is we want to be able to connect. Um, and we have found um, that this tool of Zoom, being able to see each other's faces, has been a great way to connect. You might be a kind of person that says, I don't really need to see anyone else's face, but someone might need to see your lovely face, OK? So what we're going to be doing um, for the next six weeks is we're going to be gathering um, in some different groups. And we're going to be going through a study that the tagline of this study is this. Listen to this. What to do when there's nothing you can do. Okay, I thought that sounded timely. I don't know about you. But I actually watched several of the videos and just had tears streaming down my face because although these videos of this Bible study that we're going to go through were recorded a couple years ago, it is almost eerie how um, timely that they are. And I know that that was the Holy Spirit. And so we're going to be doing these. We want to see you. We want to ask everyone in our church to participate. There are six different times um, each week um, for adults. And then we're going to have some separate ones for youth. And we just want to be able to see each other. So please consider joining one of these Zoom calls. If you have questions or you're not sure um, how it all works, um, please contact us. We'd love to get you set up on that. And there's a link, clife.church slash Zoom groups. And you can sign up um, there and just choose whatever's the best time for you, okay? So go ahead and do that um, when you get a chance. The other thing that I want to share with you is that I'm convinced, as I said, that we are to be a people that speaks hope during this season. Um, hopefully you can agree with that. Um, you know, if we don't have hope, who will? And so we're excited about that. In the beginning of February, we were preparing for our five-year Sea Life birthday, um, big celebration that, of course, we had to change. Um, but there was a, a phrase and a song that the Lord um, dropped into my heart and into Rodrigo's heart during that time, and it was this, the best is yet to come. And we, didn't, we thought that that meant, you know, okay, this is our theme for our celebration. The best years of our church are yet to come, which I believe they are. But we had no idea that over the next five weeks we'd be going through um, what we're going through, this pandemic, the coronavirus, and we still believe that the best is yet to come. And so we had some signs printed at our Sea Life Hub um, a few weeks ago, and then my friend Crystal had a great idea for us to just make some yard signs so that we can just speak hope to our, our valley. And I actually, hold on for one second. I actually have a yard sign here with me right now. Um, this is what it looks like. It says the best is yet to come, and we are praying for you. And so we would love to deliver one of these yard signs to your yard, if you have a yard, um, this week. So please text me. Um, the number is on your screen right now on this slide. Um, text me if you'd like a yard sign. We will deliver. The signs are free, absolutely free. We'd love to get one to everyone's yard. Um, if you would like to donate something in exchange for this sign, we are taking donations for the Bobcat Backpack Program. It's a program that feeds um, kids in Radford City, and just like most um, programs right now, they are in need of some food. So we'd love to collect jars of peanut butter, um, cans of chunky soup, or even monetary donations. We'd be happy to pick up peanut butter from your porch and leave a sign. So please um, text me if you'd like one. And we're going to arrange later this week and let you know when we'll be delivering those, okay? So I'm excited about that. Um, we are going to take our pray for our tithes and our offerings now. And, you know, since we have existed as a church um, for over five years now, God has been faithful, absolutely faithful. Every week, every month, he's been faithful. In times that there's been smooth sailing and times that things have been rocky. And, you know, this is no exception. And we just want to celebrate for a minute 
um, today that because of our church and because of so many um, just faithfully giving, we've been able to just love on our community in, in small ways, in big ways, in creative ways. Um, and last week, you, you may have noticed that we were able to give away a bunch of Easter baskets. We gave away 136 baskets to people in our church, which represented 473 people, if you count all the kids and the youth and everybody, but which is awesome. But not only that, this is the part that I was really excited about. Each family got a gift called a neighbor gift that they got to deliver and take to one of their neighbors. Just something small, just something fun, but to say, you know what, someone's thinking about you. We love you. We want to spread hope and life in this season. And so that was really awesome. Before we pray for our offering, um, we want to just take a look at a few pictures. This was made possible just because of the faithful giving of our church family. And so here's a few fun pictures from our Easter basket delivery last week, and then we'll pray for our offering. just to see a few of those pictures. Um, there are multiple ways that we're taking our offering during this season, online, through text giving, through mail, through drop off at the hub. But let's just take a second and pray for our tithes and our offerings right now. Lord, I thank you for the faithful giving of your people and that we're able to just do things to spread your light and your love in our community. Lord, I pray for our virtual offering that we're taking right now. Lord, would you bless every penny? Would you give our council wisdom? Would you use what's given, and multiply it to further your kingdom in this valley and all over the world. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're in for a special treat today for our kids' time. As you probably know, um, Hannah Burnett, our children's pastor, is at home snuggling her brand new little baby that she had a couple weeks ago. And so today we have one of our kids' volunteers um, that's going to be doing our kids spot. And so I want you to welcome with me, kids, get on your feet, give a clap, give a big thumbs up, a shout for Miss Amy Sims, the one and only who is going to share our kids spot today. We love you, Yay. Amy. <laughs> Yay. Good morning, everybody. Wow. It was so cool to see your faces on those pictures from Easter. And it just almost brought tears to my eyes. So I hope you enjoyed seeing some of your friends. If you had a great Easter, make sure that you say thank you to Pastor Hannah and to the church for all the things that you got, because a grateful heart is a very happy heart. You want to make sure that you cultivate that and keep that, okay? So today, if you don't have your Bibles, go get them. You will need them. We're going to do a sword drill, okay? So go get them, and we'll get started. So we are going to continue with our Fear Busting series. And today, we are going to bust fear with courage. Can you say that with me? Bust fear with courage. Good job. Do you know what courage means? Ask somebody in your room right now, what does courage mean? Today, I'm going to give you a simple definition of what courage is. It means that you can do the right thing and know and believe that God is with you, okay? In my house with my daughter, Sarah, we have a song to remember this truth. Would you like to hear it? It goes like this. I don't have to be afraid because God is with me, okay? So today, I'm gonna share with you from the Bible about that truth. You don't have to be afraid because God is with you. We can bust fear with courage. 
So get your Bibles. Hold it up for your sword drill. Don't hold it up like this because all your papers will fall out. Like this. Straight up. Okay. When I say charge, I want you to find Numbers 13. Numbers is a book of the Bible, not the number 13. There's lots of Numbers 13. Okay? So find Numbers 13 in the Old Testament. Ready? Up. Three, two, one. Charge. Find Numbers 13. Did you find it? Great. Now I want you to put a bookmark in it. Close it up. After today's service, there are activities for you to do with your family about this story today. This is just a part of God's story. So the activities will help you learn more about it. Okay? So for our story today, from Numbers 13, we are going to explore the promised land. So I need you to be explorers with me. Okay? Stand up. When I read this story and I say go, I want you to tiptoe around the room like you're exploring the promised land. When I say stop, I want you to sit back down. Are you ready? God's people, the Israelites, were close to the land that God had promised them. Moses chose 12 spies to go and explore the new land. The Israelites couldn't wait to hear what the promised land was like. Once inside, the spy stopped. So sit back down. Good job. To check it out. God's promised land was so beautiful, and everything that he said about it was true. Everything and everywhere that they would go was beautiful. It had good food, and the land was amazing. But they stopped because they saw something terrifying. Giants were in the land. God's people needed a report of what the land was like. So the 12 spies would go back to the people. Once they were there, they began to tell what they saw. And they stopped in fear. Ten of the people were so afraid and said, the giants would stop us if we went in. They're, we are like grasshoppers compared to them. Grasshoppers are so tiny, and the giants are so big. But two men named Caleb and Joshua said, don't be afraid. God said he would be with us. They had courage, and he wants us to go into the promised land. But everyone stopped listening to Caleb and Joshua. Instead, they listened to the ten men who were afraid. And all the Israelites let the fear of those ten men spread everywhere, and they forgot what God said. The Israelites were so afraid. God told Moses, because these people do not trust me, they will not go into the promised land. So the Israelites had to stop their journey to the promised land. And for 40 more years, God's people walked around in the desert. Finally, many years later, all the people who had not remembered God's word were gone. But Caleb and Joshua were still alive, and God rewarded them for their courage by allowing them to go into the promised land. Caleb and Joshua never stopped having courage. They knew that they were doing the right thing, and God was with them. The Israelites listened to the ten men instead of listening to God. And because of that, they did not get to go into the promised land. When we are afraid, we can stop and remember that God is with us and he will help us do the right thing and have courage. So, do you remember the song that my family does? We don't have to be afraid because God is with us. That is courage. So we can bust fear with courage. Say after me, bust fear with courage. Good job. So before I go with, from you today, I have to remind you to work on your memory verse. And this came from Psalm 34, 4. Can you help me with that? 
If you already know it, make sure you send a video to Pastor Hannah so she can see you do it because we want to make sure that we remember these and put them in our heart. Do you remember what it is? Psalm 34, 4. I'll help you with the motions. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Psalm 34, 4. Good job, everybody. I want you to remember to bust fear with courage. I'll see you next time. Yeah, let's give a hand to Miss Amy. Thank you, Miss Amy. That was amazing. Now I want to sing everything. Yay! <laughs> you know, guys, uh, we are up for a treat this morning. But first, uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you so much for opening your homes, opening your place just to, to allow us to speak to you and to share with you about the good news of Jesus Christ. And uh, this morning is not an exception. Um, I am super excited to have one of my dear friends to share with you guys this morning. Um, you know, I've realized in the recent uh, season just how God has placed uh, different people in different places to be shepherds, to care to love, to encourage, and whether it's a Christian school, whether it's a middle school, whether it's a, a, a dealership for cars, uh, a hospital, I believe that God has placed uh, shepherds uh, in different places to really to be Jesus to a lot of people. And I want to invite my, my friend this morning, that uh, his name is Doug Hampton, that he's one of the shepherds of, of one of the schools here in, uh, in Blacksburg, and uh, he has a fresh word. Uh, for you guys, for, for us, that I hope that it will encourage you as it has encouraged me already. Uh, so let's take a moment just to say welcome to my dear friend, uh, Doug Hampton. So come over here, my friend, Doug. <laughs> hey, Rod. So glad that you're here. Anyway, Jesus bless you. Well, good morning. Hope everybody's doing pretty well. Um, kind of excited to be here with you guys. Let's just open up with a word of prayer. Father, we just come before you this morning, and, and we're just so excited to be with you. And more than that, we're excited that you're with us. Lord, I just ask that you bless this time and that the, that the thoughts I share this morning, the things that are truth and the things that are spirit, Father, they, they take hold in our hearts. And the things that are just kind of Doug's nonsense, Lord, that they'd float away. Lord, I know that that's what you're about, and we're, we're about that this morning too. In Jesus' name, amen. So it's good to see everybody. And when Rod and I were first talking about what we're going to talk about today, the, the, the biggest idea we kind of had was, well, what's next? Last weekend was Easter, and Easter is kind of like the high point of the, of the, school, of the, of the school calendar. Listen to me, I'm talking like a principal already, a high point of the church calendar. And um, a lot of times it's like, you know, Easter is where everything peaks, and then life goes back to normal. So we wanted to talk about what's next. We wanted to talk about the aftermath of Easter. And celebrate the fact that, what, that God's provision um, from the cross to the empty tomb is something that changed our lives radically. But now we need to step forward with those changed lives. We've become His children, and what does that really mean? So we're looking at the question this morning, who is a child of God? And right off our heads, you know, right off the top of our heads, we would, we would tend to say, well, everybody's a child of God. You know, we're created, man is created in God's image, and that's what it's all about. That would be a simple, a simple answer. But actually, if we explore the Scriptures, we don't really see it quite like that. So I want to tell you a story, and, um, and hopefully I can draw the point in from that story a little bit. A few years ago, I had a kindergarten teacher, um, a, a wonderful lady who'd been married for a number of years, and she and her husband had been trying to have kids for a long, long time. And it just wasn't working out. In fact, it looked like it wasn't going to work out for them at all. And they had started to have some discussions about maybe we should look into adoption. Well, we started the school year, and we got to September, and we were very early in September when they got a phone call. And the phone call went kind of like this way. Can you come to a meeting this evening? Um, there's a child that the family is interested in, in giving up for adoption, and um, we want to have a meeting about it tonight. So they thought, well, like, we just started praying about this. Seems like God has opened the door. We'll, we'll go to the meeting. Well, they went to the meeting, and they left that meeting with a child, with a newborn infant. They were shocked. Um, they didn't expect anything to turn over quite that fast. In fact, they had to go to Walmart on the way home because they didn't have any supplies of any sort for a child. And 
their prayers had been answered. Boom. Excitement. And life changed radically. But there was another aspect to it. And about nine months later, to make the adoption official, it was time to go to court. And now it's the summer. And so this teacher, you know, a friend of mine said, you know, hey, we'd love for your family to be there when we finalize the adoption. Well, luckily for me, I don't have much experience going to court. So I got up on a, a June morning, um, put my uh, shorts on, and went to court. And once I got there, I found out, you know, you can't go into court in shorts. So the judge and the bailiff decided that they would actually exit the courtroom for a moment because if they saw me in shorts, they had to kick me out. They picked a spot in the courtroom where I could sit where nobody would see my legs. And then I went into the courtroom, and then the bailiff came in, and then the judge came in. And, of course, he looked at the guy with, that he knew was wearing shorts that he couldn't see in his shorts and was having kind of a personal laugh with me. But it was an amazingly powerful thing as we went through the legal process of watching them become adopted uh, watching this child become adopted by this family and seeing the, 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 the legalese of it all come together and it be formalized and it be completed. It was a powerful experience. And the judge got so excited and so swept up in the moment afterwards, he actually said, so we want, let's bring everybody up front for some pictures, even the guy wearing shorts. <laughs> so it was really cool. It was, it was so exciting. And this whole process, this journey from the surprised child to the legal adoption of the child, it reminds me of the excitement of Easter. Yeah, becoming God's child. And in fact, if we look at scriptures, if we look at scriptures, uh, 1 John 3, 1 says, see what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. And isn't the Easter story all about that? God's great love going to the cross and then rising from the tomb. Man, so exciting. But in, in John 1.12, as I try to change my thing here, but to all who did receive him and believed in his name, he gave right to become children of God. Now, this throws a little bit of a monkey wrench in the idea of just because we're created means we're children of God. In one sense, that's very, very true. But in a deeper spiritual, scriptural sense, being a child of God is something you enter into by being adopted into his family and being legally in relationship with him. So, the other thing that's very interesting about this concept of the child of God is the fact that the phrase child of God never appears in Scripture. Never. If you, you NI, NIV, NASB, New American Standard, uh, English Standard Version. Look up Child of God. What it'll show you is there are verses that have those three words in them, but those three words don't appear in a row. Instead, it's always referred to as children of God, as we saw in the verses. Children of God is a phrase that's repeated in the Bible, as is sons and daughters of God, but it's always plural. So that brings us to the, a point that we want to make as we, as we explore this this morning and talk about being a child of God, a child of God is not a solitary creature. A child of God is designed for community. It's no I, it's we. So if we hang on to that for a moment, let's look at who the children of God are. The children of God are people who have embraced the message of Jesus Christ. And of course, last weekend, it's all about embracing the message that Christ died for our sins, that He rose and defeated death and sin. And as we embrace that message, we get to know Jesus Christ, and we embrace the messenger, for that is what Jesus is. In John chapter 17, it defines eternal life. Now, I'm one of those guys that when I'm looking for what something is, I love the idea of the Bible telling me straight out what something is, and I don't have to work for it too much. In John 17, 3, it says, And this is eternal life, that you may know God the Father and Jesus Christ whom He has sent. The idea that we absolutely know God, we embrace His messenger, Jesus, brings us into relationship with God.
But beyond that, we need to embrace the task. So we embrace the message, we embrace the messenger, and we embrace the task. And what is the task? Well, there are many attributes to being the children of God. But perhaps the most crucial and the most vital part of being among the children of God, a child of God within the children, is understanding this idea that, yes, we have to exist in community. We are not solitary creatures. The idea that we can't be on an island and be who we were chosen to be. And Easter is not just about God dying for me and God dying for you and raising from the dead for me and for you. It is that God died for His people and raised for His people, for His church, for that community. The idea that relationship is what it is all about, first with God and then with one another. And there's an interesting parallel here. When we are brought into the family of God, we truly do become more like His image. Think about this for a moment. Even God exists in a manner of speech in community. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. And we have community with God first and then with one another. It's not, an, it's not an isolated, solitary kind of thing. We are designed for community with each other. We are designed for relationship first with God and then with others. And beyond that, we are designed or created, we are forgiven, we are redeemed, we are indwelled and we are empowered all for relationship. Think about that for a moment. We are designed, created, forgiven, redeemed, indwelled, and empowered all for relationship. Every child of God is designed for community, and that very community is designed for every child. When we were praying, getting ready for the service today, James said something that I had thought about, and it's just so powerful, is that we're going through this period of isolation, this period of um, being set apart, being you know in our own homes, away from others, during a period in history when we have the technology to be able to connect with others. If this had happened 30 or 40 or 50 years ago, we wouldn't be having this church service today, not online. We wouldn't have the mechanisms by, with, by which to reach each other that we have today. All of us know someone who probably is home alone, a widow or a young person that lives in an apartment or a house by themselves and doesn't have connection with anybody else in their own home. How important is it for us as a community to reach into those homes by whatever means we can? be it text, be it house party, FaceTime, video. It's an amazing thing to be able to do. And it makes me think of the scripture in the first chapter of Colossians, verse 24, which actually says, Now I rejoice in what I am suffering for you, and I fill up in my flesh what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of His body, which is the church. Think about that phrase for a moment. I fill up in my flesh what is lacking in Christ's afflictions. On the surface, that sounds scandalous. That sounds sacrilegious. That sounds wrong. How do we add anything to Christ's afflictions? How could that not be all there is? But the truth of the matter is is simply this. It doesn't speak to needing something besides Christ's death and suffering and resurrection for your salvation, for your relationship with Him. But it does speak to the unbelievably important reality 
that we are designed for each other, that we are designed to connect with one another, to be there for one another. When Christ was physically present on this earth, he could be in one place at one time. And now, by virtue of the situation we have, his spirit can be everywhere. But he still physically can't be everywhere at one moment. He requires his children for that. That's the idea. That's the idea. We weren't just created for relationship with God. We were created for relationship with one another. We were created for community. And this great love that the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God is what we are to lavish on one another. Last Sunday in the Easter message, Renee mentioned the starting point group that some of us were involved in over the past few months. And I can remember being so moved a number of times, but especially the last time we met together, and Renee referenced it last week, these two powerful testimonies, short testimonies that were given. And in both of those testimonies, what stood out to me was it was the presence of someone else's love, the presence of someone else's comfort, just the presence of others that made such a difference in the lives of both of those believers. And as they spoke, as they talked about their wounds from the past and how God was healing those wounds, and as they talked about their challenges from the past and how God had and stepped up and helped them answer those challenges. What I heard and what I saw as we were in a Zoom meeting, looking at all those faces at one time, I saw the face of Jesus and I heard the voice of Jesus because they physically represented that at that moment to me and to everyone in the group. That is the power of community. And that's what's next. We've had the mountaintop experience of Easter. And thank God for that. We've had the powerful communion with him through what his son did on the cross and then through the empty tomb. What's next? We connect as family. We connect as his people. We connect as his children. And the broken world changes. And especially during this time, when the challenges of being there for one another have been heightened, we need to use every tool we can get our hands on and reach out and touch the hearts and be there for others in our community. For some of us, that means, hey, we might need a break from the fact that we've got so many kids and so many people in our house. We just need a lifeline to somewhere else. For many of us, it's I'm alone in my house, and though I love my dog, I need something more. This is an amazing time. This is an amazing challenge before us. But that challenge is also a great opportunity. And for me, I know, as a principal of a school, watching these seniors with graduating class of 2020 not have all the activities and all the connection that all the other classes have had through the years. It breaks my heart. But it's incumbent upon me and others to find creative ways to take what the locusts have eaten and through God's leadership and God's example give to them something different. But give them something special and lavish the love on them that God lavished on us from the cross and the empty tomb that makes us the children of God. Amen. Every child of God is assigned for community and that's us, guys. We are designed to be in community. Let's just sing this song. 
This is a time of just really declaring that we are children of God. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance of my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. For my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again into your family. Your blood runs through my veins. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer. blankets time to get up off the couch uh, if you're with your family you're with other people can you hold their hand uh, if you're alone know that we're uh, virtually holding hands with you right now we love you and we love that you're a child of God a um, couple of reminders before we go one is make sure you sign up for our virtual zoom groups those will be starting soon and you don't want to miss that also, we will be online digitally here for about another 10, 15 minutes. So stay and chat and hang out a little bit. We'd love the chance to talk to you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that you call us your child, Lord, that you made it possible through the death and resurrection of Jesus that we celebrated yesterday so that every day 
every Sunday, every Monday, every Tuesday, every day, we can be called your children, Lord. We lift up those in our family and our friends and in our community who don't know that they have the possibility of being children of God, Lord. And we ask you to help us draw those people close to them, to you, through the love that we are known by, Lord. Help us love our neighbors. Help us love each other. And help us love you better because you are a good, good father. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You guys have a great week. We love you all very much.